This is part 20 of WCF video series. In this video, we'll discuss how to centralize exception handling in WCF by implementing iError Handler interface. This is continuation to part 19, so please watch part 19 before proceeding. How to handle all WCF service exceptions in one central location? This is a very common interview question. In case of an ASP.NET web application, we can make use of the application underscore error event handler method within the global.asax file to log all the exceptions and even redirect the user to a custom error page. In WCF, to centralize exception handling and to return a general fault reason to the client, we implement iError handler interface. There are three steps to centralize exception handling in WCF. Let's look at those steps in detail. Step 1 is to implement iErrorHandler interface. If you look at the class here, Global Error Handler class, this class is implementing iErrorHandler interface. So first of all, let's go ahead and add a class file with name globalerrorhandler.cs. Let's flip to Visual Studio. We'll be working with the same example that we worked with in the previous session. So first let's add a class file and let's name it globalerrorhandler.cs. Now we want this class to implement iErrorHandler interface. And this interface is present in a different namespace. And if you want to know the namespace after you have typed the fully qualified name of the type, um, simply press control dot and you will uh, have the options. Look at this. This interface is present in system.servicemodel.dispatcher namespace. So let's go ahead and bring that in. And we want to implement this interface. Again, press control dot. You will get the option to implement the interface. So select that option. And if you notice, this interface has got two methods, handle error and provide fault. So what is this provide fault method? Now, whenever there is an unhandled exception or a fault, this method gets called automatically. So this is where we have the opportunity to write code to shield that exception that has occurred from the client. So basically what we do here is, if at all, if there is a .NET exception, you know, we're going to convert the .NET exception into a general fault and then return that fault to the client. We don't want to be sharing the actual .NET exceptions with the client for two reasons. Number one, if we return a .NET exception, then the client for the WCF service should also be .NET. So there your service is not going to be interoperable with other technologies like Java. And two, if there is an unhandled exception, then what is going to happen to the channel? The communication channel is going to fall. As a result, the client proxy will become useless. So we don't want that to happen. So we will be converting that unhandled exception into a SOAP fault, a general SOAP fault, and then return that to the client. If it is a fault exception, then that's fine because, you know, uh, if you look at our service here, here, you know, we are trying to divide two numbers. If the denominator is zero, then what we are doing, we are throwing a fault exception. Now, if you want to return the same fault to the client, then that's fine. Otherwise, what you can do, you can convert this fault to a different fault if you want to. So you have that opportunity within this method. So you can write code to do that. And to speed things up, I have already typed this code uh, in a notepad. So let's go ahead and copy that code and paste that within provide fault method. So what are we doing here? We are checking if, first of all, let's get rid of these compilation errors. Um, now let's bring in the namespaces that are required. So fault exception is present in system.servicemodel namespace message fault is present in system.servicemodel.channels namespace. All right. So if the error that has occurred, if it's a fault exception, in this case, we are simply returning. But if your application requirement warrants that you don't want to share the actual fault with the client, then you can shield that fault, you know, with another generalized so fault like this. But to keep things simple, you know, I'm simply returning the actual fault exception that has occurred in this uh, implementation here. Okay. Now, if it is not a fault exception, then what we are doing, we are creating an instance of our fault exception object. 
and look at this we are returning this general error message that's stating that a general service error has occurred and then we are creating an instance of message fault we are calling this create message fault method on the fault exception object which is going to create message fault object for us and then finally we are calling this static method on the message class that is create message and then passing in the version so basically this version is coming into this method as a parameter so what is this message version going to contain basically it's going to specify whether we want soap 11 or soap 12 okay so we are passing it as it is to this function and then the message fault object that we have created and the third parameter is action at the moment we are passing it as now okay and what is this create message method doing it's creating a message object and if you look at this fault you know where is this coming from this is nothing but the parameter for provide fault okay and notice you know this parameter is of type you know it's a reference parameter so all we are doing is we are storing the message within this variable which gets returned to the client who called the service okay and keep in mind this provide fault gets called before handle error so whenever there is an unhandled exception or a fault provide fault gets called first and then handle error gets called asynchronously so what are we going to do in handle error basically in this method we write the code you know to log the actual exception that has occurred either to a database table or to an XML file to an event viewer so that the IT team can investigate what is that exception why has it occurred and if the team has to fix it they will go ahead and fix it so basically we need to log the actual exception that has occurred so we do that within handle error so basically if we want to log the exception to a database table we write the ADO.NET code to log that exception in the interest of time and to keep this example simple I'm not going to write that ADO.NET code okay and if you look at the return type of this method it's boolean meaning this method uh, will either return true or false so let's simply return true to indicate that we have logged the exception and another important thing to keep in mind is that this method gets called asynchronously so whenever there is an unhandled exception when the client tries to call our service you know and um, obviously this method gets called and there is this message which is get which get returned to the client and asynchronously this method also get called the exception gets logged to the database table now you may be wondering why can't we do you know the same thing within provide fault why can't we log you know basically write the ADO.NET code within this provide fault method to log that exception to the database table for example that's basically because you know if we write logging code within provide fault you're going to make the client wait while you are logging the exception either to a database table or to an XML file okay we want the service to be responsive to the client application we don't want to be doing lengthy you know processes within this provide fault you know as soon as the user clicks a button and calls the service you know if there is a fault we want to return that fault message uh, to the client as soon as we can that's the reason why we do that logging asynchronously within this handle error method all right so that's about i error handler interface that's the first step and step two so basically within I error handler interface we got provide fault and handle error methods provide fault this method gets called automatically when there is an unhandled exception or a fault in this method we have the opportunity to write code to convert the unhandled exception into a generic fault that can be returned to the client and this provide fault gets called before handle error method handle error this method gets called asynchronously after provide fault method is called and the error message is returned to the client this means that this method allows us to write code to log the exception without blocking the client call step 2 is to create a custom service behavior attribute to let WCF know that we want to use the global error handler class that we created in step 1 whenever there is an unhandled exception okay so here we have a class called global error handler behavior attribute you can give this class any name that you want okay so global error handler behavior attribute class and this class is implementing you know i service behavior interface 
and this class is also inheriting from attribute abstract class. Uh, first of all, let's go ahead and add this class file to the project. If you look at this slide, it's it's a little busy here, but then it looks um, you know in code, it's much easier uh, than it looks on the slide. So let's flip to Visual Studio and add a class file. So to this project, let's add a class file. And let's call it global error handler behavior attribute. And we want this class to inherit from attribute base class, I mean abstract class, and then implement I service behavior attribute. Uh, uh, interface and this interface is present in system.servicemodel.description namespace so let's go ahead and bring that in and we want to implement this interface so let's implement this interface and if you look at what it has done this interface has got three methods okay now we don't have to provide implementation for these two methods I mean we can leave the implementation blank for now for add binding parameters and validate methods. Now we have to provide implementation for apply dispatch behavior. This is where we write code to associate our global error handler with WCF. Okay, so basically what we are going to do here is loop through each channel dispatcher and then associate global error handler as the error handler for WCF. Uh, we'll look at that in just a bit, but first of all, let's go ahead and provide a constructor for this class. And again, to speed things up, I have already typed it, so let's copy and paste that within this class. I think we got the spelling incorrect, so let's copy and paste it right there. Alright, now if this code here doesn't make sense, it'll be clear in just a bit, don't worry. And let's also write code to attach the global error handler with WCF. And again, I have the code typed, so let me copy and paste it. Now, this code if this code is not clear at the moment, don't worry. We'll come back to that in just a bit and it should be clear. Again, let's bring in the namespaces that are required. So let's press control dot and that should bring in the namespace that's required. All right, so step two is to basically create a custom service behavior attribute to let WCF know that we want to use the global error handler class that we created in step one whenever there is an unhandled exception. And step three is to decorate this calculator service uh, with global error handler behavior attribute. And look at what we are passing to the constructor of that class. We are passing our global error handler class that we created in step one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. So here we have our calculator service. We are going to decorate this calculator service class with global error handler behavior um, attribute and then to the constructor we are going to pass the type of our global error handler class. All right now so this if you look at this global error handler behavior class it has got one constructor which we have provided and if you look at the constructor implementation straightforward we are passing in a parameter of type type okay and then look at this here we have a private variable within the class called you know error handler type again you know its type is type so basically we are saying okay this variable equals whatever we are passing into this constructor and if you look at our service what are we passing into the constructor of that class you know the type of global error handler class okay and then what else is this um, class doing. So now within this variable we have the type of our global error handler class and if you look at apply 
dispatch behavior function implementation, what are we doing here? We are creating an instance of the type that is stored in the class variable. So here, what do we have in this variable? We have global error handler class type. So based on that type, using that type, we are creating an instance of that class and that is stored in this handler variable. And what are we doing next? We are looping through each service channel dispatcher and then to that dispatcher, we are attaching the error handler to the error handler's collection property. Okay, so now after this step three, we are all hooked up. Okay, so whenever there is an unhandled exception or a fault, obviously, you know, the error handler, the global error handler that we have created, you know, this provide fault will get called first and then handle error. Okay, so to test it, let's put in breakpoints within, uh, you know, this global error handler. Let's run this. And then one more thing that we need to do to test this at the moment uh, within our calculator service, we have the strike catch. So let's go ahead and comment these strike catches so that it's going to throw, you know, divide by zero dot net exception and then we can test it. So let's go ahead and run the client, I mean the service itself. And then let's go ahead and run the client. Again, within the client, you know, at the moment we are catching divide by zero fault. So let's simply catch the fault exception, the base type. And then let's display the message within the label control. And if you look at our service, so within global error handler, we have, you know, breakpoints within uh, provide fault and handle error methods. So let's go ahead and run the client. So let's try to divide 10 by 0. So obviously an exception should be thrown. So the service should throw divide by 0 dot net exception. It's taking a bit of time here. Look at that. Here, you know, we get divide by 0 exception and that is unhandled. Okay. Now let's continue debugging. Look at that. This provide fault method is called automatically. And when I press F10, look at that. It is checking if the error is a fault exception. Now, it's not a fault exception. So it's going to come, you know, into this piece of code. And what are we doing here? We are creating an instance of fault exception. We're creating the message fault. And we are setting that message as the value for this uh, reference parameter. Press F10. And look at that. Now the control has come to handle error. And if you look at the client now, look at that. The client is now responsive. Okay. So basically this method is now called asynchronously. Okay. Look at that. A general service error occurred. You know, whatever message that we are sending back, that's what is displayed within the client. Okay. And then press F5. So that's how we do, um, you know, error handling in a centralized location in WCF. So implement, provide implementation for I error handler interface, you know, create a custom attribute to associate that global error handler with WCF so that it gets called automatically whenever there is an unhandled exception. And finally, decorate your service with that attribute class and specify, you know, what is the type of your global handler. So three simple steps to centralize exception handling in WCF. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.